Looks like our heroes got a lot of cool toys for Christmas. Let's see what they can do this month on D and D minus. All right, it's time to d- 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 duel Gary, uh, who is the monster. Correct. Boing. All right, uh, Morgan, did Boop. you have a sound effect? Are, are we doing Heath? You morning took two. Show? Now everyone else gets two. Okay, everybody gets <laughs> two. Morgan, morning show news. Is- I actually yeah. get the views. I know you get one. Okay, everyone gets two total. Arrgh. There nice. you go. I, got I said my second Morgan out. Show newses instead of Morning Show noises. <laughs> yeah, I keep hearing my name and it's freaking me out. <laughs> Morgan, just do a funny noise. Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely not. Respect your integrity, Morgan. Morgan, do sound effects? What are you kidding me? Do That's a right. perfectly regular noise <laughs> that makes it yeah. so we can sneak past somebody. Ooh. A mundane mm-hmm. noise. A normal noise. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Well, I mean, that right. was noise. Like, he did make noises there. That's yeah. really hard to answer that with. Yeah, you negative. can't not make noise. I mean, point, he can. You could be silent. That's true. That is one of those options. I mean, you can't be silent. I mean, look, like, you personally, but Morgan. I yes, think. we've learned over everyone on this podcast is aware that I physically cannot be silent. As a bonus action, I would like to cast something right now. <laughs> Right now, before the right fight starts. Right now, before wait, the wait, fight wait, starts. Without wait. rolling Before any of initiative. us have spoke in character. I yeah. would like to do that and then take a long rest and have it reset. That's not great because we are literally in a fight right now. <laughs> we were about to roll initiative. I'm going to, I could use my bonus action to cast stop time, during which time we could take long rests. I just have a great idea just now. Oh my God. What if you roll <laughs> initiative first? And then you use that to fight the fucking bad guy. So basic. I got the note that I was sort of like a, like a attack and then hide, I think. Right. And then fight from ranged. Is that correct? Yeah. I'm like a jab and weave kind of guy. Yeah. You're a jab and weave kind of guy. Plus you've got a super overpowered bow. You got all sorts of cool shit. Okay. So I should be like, I shouldn't play it like claw where I'm just like standing in front of him. Punching him. Yeah, you are no longer the tank. You are not going to want to do. Yeah, I should be like a stay out of range. Do you have a bow like bow and arrow or bow like staff? I have like two crossbows, a blowgun, a regular bow. You have a blow like neck darts? You can do neck neck darts right now? Yeah, he has neck neck darts. darts. Nice. I don't think Gary has a neck though. I think he's in the ground, isn't he? Yeah, he is ground right now. Yeah. Maybe we have Don just make our characters from now on. <laughs> These Don are awesome. and Alex. So they happy. made them together. And Alex, yes. Everybody Don involved. and Alex, I would never fucking play a paladin in real life. Are you kidding me? Who is who is Alex? Alex is a listener to the show who's also a professional dungeon master. Link in the show notes if you want to hire him. And he's all, yeah, he reached out to offer to help on some of the earlier stuff. And then he's I approached him. Professional? Like he gets Yeah, he's paid? a professional dungeon master. Yes. That's awesome. That is a that is a job <laughs> these days. Yeah. A lot of people want to try playing D D D. Yeah. But they don't want their like one of their weird friends to yeah. just be like, all right. Well, no, it's because nobody wants to like create the fucking game for their friends to do. Exactly. They yeah. just want to have it pre-made. And and there's always there's always an Alex Cloud out there. All right. Are we ready to roll initiative? Yeah. All right. All right. Everybody roll initiative. Gary Gygax, more like Sherry Ibex. Slime. Imax. Nailed it. That's an 11 for Dave. 23. I got 15. Yeah, I rolled a 7, so still not good, but better. All right, 7 for Snedrick and 23 for Claw. Or should I say Talon? You can say Claw. All right. Claw, you are up first. I like that my name is just Dave's grandfather. <laughs> well, I hadn't decided on the name yet <laughs> when I was writing it. So, yeah. 
It's uh, Snedrick Ferndangle is Snedrick the Third, as it turns out. So <laughs> I am father of father of Dave, father of Dorkhouse. Well, before we go, and this probably won't make the edit, but like, where the fuck are we? we I've completely forgot. We're like standing above Gary. He's like a big ground thing. You know, down into the sewers where you go every time for Gary's adventures, that big cavern. Yeah. It's that cavern, except instead of the hill having a house on it, Gary is the hill. And he just turned to all of you. You're sort of at the mouth of the cave looking down at him. And he just turned to you and said, hey there, strangers. Are you ready to fucking die? So we're not underground. Sorry, you are underground. You are, we yes. are underground. We yes. are underground. We're in the sewers. So is there like this hill? Is it surrounded by other high points? Or is this is the hill the only high point and everything around it is like lower than the hill? Uh, yes. <laughs> the second, there was that, an or in there. The oh, sorry. The second, the second thing. The second thing. thing, the second you said, thing. Yeah. Okay. So there is no high ground. <laughs> there is no. I mean, you're on high ground technically because you're looking down at him from the mouth of the cave. We are looking down at him. We are looking down at him from the mouth of a cave. This better matter so fucking hard. Well, because I'm a jab and weave, I'm a range <laughs> jab and weave guy, so I should be high up. Yep, sure. So I shouldn't be down on the ground next to him shooting him with arrows. I agree that. I feel like there's a middle ground between calculating the curvature of this fucking cavern and I stand next to him and fire directly into his ball sack. Eli, is there a place I could be high ground? Of yes. High, of high, ground. high ground. There you go. But it's only where we're standing, right? There's no other right now, yeah. cave mouths. No other cave mouths. Yeah, we've been in like a tiny tunnel and then it's opened up into a big right. cave. And he's a hill in a sewer. And he's a hill. He's a big hill within the big area within the cave that we're in. Yes. Yeah. And, we're, and he's made of cave ground. Cave crowns. He's made of rock. He's a he's a rock. He's a rock. So he's he's, he's a, a big boy. stalagmite. He's like a, a mound of stalagmites. Yeah, he's probably not pointy. He's probably more roundy. Yeah, he's more round. Like dirt? Yeah. He's like mud. He's like a hill of mud. Yeah, like like Angelo's drawing of him. Stapugmite. I have never seen Angelo's drawing of him. He's like a big pile of dirt with a cartoon face. Like how tall? Like Job of the Hut. So right usually when you have known him, he's been like five foot seven. Now he's like 20 feet high and way wide. So he's like a giant mound of dirt. So then we're like 40 feet in the air. Yes. At the cave mouth. Okay. For the last time, there is, if at our level, there is nothing else that I could like grab purchase on, right? Like I couldn't. Yeah, you could. Abs are you kidding? Okay. You're Talon the Sun Thief. You can abs You can grab purchase all over the fucking place. Okay. Plus you could fly. Oh, right. <laughs> Shit. Okay. <laughs> Fuck, none of this matters. <laughs> <laughs> this d is a stupid game. <laughs> Morgan just walks away, <laughs> tries to fly. Also, we're in the past. Is that correct? Yes. By like 50 or 60 years. Mm, those numbers I would not like to nail down. <laughs> <laughs> we're our grandparents. You're your grandparents. Okay. And they're at like in their 20s. We're in our 20s. No, we have no, no. We don't know that. What do we know? We don't. We you know you're your grandparents. If I look at myself, what age do I look? Level twenty. Dragonborn age, right? Dragonborn. I look the age of Dragonborn. You look like a young Dragonborn. All lizards look the same. Wow, <laughs> wow. I'm gonna fly. Nice. Directly over him. Love it. But like, still at our height. Sure. Is there? Are we at the ceiling or is there? Space above us. There is space above you. Okay. I'm going to go like another... How, okay, so we're about 40 feet up. He's about 20 feet tall. I'm going to go about 10 feet above our level, but directly over him. Sure. So just kind of like centered. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to shoot the oath bow. Just a side question. Is this the only fight we're going to do with these as these characters? No. Okay. Then I'm not going to name him my sworn enemy because that is apparently a thing I can do. Yeah. I have a bunch of shit like like end battle that shit that I can do too. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to fire an arrow of returning. So the arrow of returning, when this arrow is fired for the first time, it teleports back to you. Every time you fire this arrow from here on out, there's a 50% chance it will teleport back into your inventory. This arrow can always be recovered after battles. It's 150 foot range. And I don't think there's anything 
special about the oath bow besides the sworn enemy thing? Yeah, just the sworn enemy thing. Okay, so I'm going to fire an arrow of returning, and you gave me like 60 arrow of returnings. I know, that was Alex. He's so brilliant. Jesus. Alex was like, well, of course they're going to count their arrows. We're not going to count the arrows. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just scrolled through like a hundred of them. For all we know, he has one arrow of return. What am I, Legolas? Oh, one plus 11. That's a 12. Oh, that, yeah, that will not hit. Getting the bad rolls out of the way now. <laughs> so you take glorious flight above Gary and fire an arrow down and it just... <laughs> really in a finesse kind of way. Yeah, yep, and then just like sticks I... into the... He doesn't even notice. He's still looking at everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> That's how smooth you were. All right. What's your bonus action? I I think I want to do a sneak attack, right? I mean, you are, you are definitely built for sneak attacks, but it's up to you. So I can do like a sneak attack pretty much every attack, it seems, right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do a sneak attack. I'm assuming the arrow came back to me, right? Yep. But now from here on out, I got a, it's 50% or I lose it, right? Yeah. Or you could fire a different arrow. Doesn't seem to matter. So I'll just fire the same one. <laughs> Short. Jesus. A two plus 11, 13. No. <laughs> What's the and fuck? And then you come flying out of another side. You fly around <laughs> another arrow goes <laughs> landing into him. <laughs> cool. I'm done. <laughs> nice. All right. Gary is up next. Boom. And he looks at you and his voice echoes throughout the cave and he says, Four versus one? That's not fair. And he takes his hands and his head and sort of slams them forward into the earth in front of you. And when he pulls back up, there are three earth elementals standing in front of him. So what, did he just like cast a spell to do that? No, he sort of like slumped his hands and head forward and then pulled back from it and his hands and head became three separate different earth elementals. So he made, he like, he turned part, parts of himself into m more stuff. He's a mud monster. Yeah. It, he created three new mud monsters. Okay. Not with, not with magic out of his body. No, not with magic. He did that with regular physical creating elementals <laughs> out of his body. <laughs> Normal science. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay. I'm sorry. You, you were asking because you're about to do a magical thing. Sorry. That's on me. I thought you were just like, well, how do you do that? I was like, well, he <laughs> yeah. How did he do that? <laughs> dragons. Science? What? It's an innate ability. It's not a spell. I'll allow it. They're on the I'll ground. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Good. Allow it. Yeah, that makes me. I, uh, I appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. Bridget, you were up next. Okay. Well, he hired he hired two more or three more of his kinds, so and now my thing was done. Is it possible for me to get around the three without triggering a attack of opportunity? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big old cavern. Really, and get to him around and to him. I mean, your speed is twenty five feet, so probably not get to him. Ah, uh, damn. Okay, damn. What if you did some like sweet flippy flips to get past him and then hit Gary? I I would like, well, maybe Bridget might want to do that. <laughs> no, but uh, her uncle is, or her fucking grandfather is not as, you know what? He's more athletic than she is, actually, now that I see he it. might be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way more athletic. <laughs> it's more of a strength thing, so you might want to like yeah. football tackle your way through the uh, things. But if you do that, you're definitely going to take oh, an attack. You could Red Rover it. Yeah, I know. I could. You know, I am going to... I am going to use a dash to use my a, a action as an extra move. Great. And that'll that'll let me get to Gary without without triggering a attack of opportunity, yes? Yeah. All right. I would like to run around them and up to him. And then I would like to challenge him to a duel as a bonus action. All right. Compelled duel. All right. Read that description. All right. It's just you and me, fucker. Wisdom 18 is the attack save. The, the, the uh, what is it? It's a wisdom save. Yes. Mm -hmm. He needs to beat a wisdom save. You attempt to compel a creature into a duel. One creature that you can see within range must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is drawn to you. 
Compelled by your divine demand. Okay. I'm picturing you just like taking a glove off and slapping Gary in the face twice. And he's like, <laughs> oh, son of a bitch. Oh, that's exactly what I am doing. Very sheriff of Rottingham. Yeah. You know. Men in dice. He rolled a 17. So what happens? Oh, well, it, well then, all right. What happens to him is for the duration, he has disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures other than me and must make a wisdom saving throw each time he attempts to move to a space that is more than 30 feet away from me. If he succeeds on that saving throw, the spell doesn't restrict the target's movement for that turn, but he still does has a disadvantage on all attacks toward me. The spell ends if you attack any other creature. If you cast a spell that targets a hostile creature other than the target, if a creature friendly to you damages the target or casts a harmful spell on it, or if you end your turn more than 30 feet away from the target. So if he if he runs away from me successfully. Right. Can he move? And I don't and I can't get can I move? No, can he move? Well, who knows, right? I'm I'm there anyway. I, I basically I'm just making sure that he he doesn't focus on you guys while you take care of the golems. Yeah. So Bridget, with your newfound strength in your new body, you swing from stalactite to stalactite over and above, and you land right down in front of Gary. Like he'd said, you slap him across the face. I don't know how, because he's 20 feet tall. You you know what? As you're landing, you slap him. You come down with a slap oh, across yeah. the face, and Gary goes, Oh, you're going to get it now. <laughs> I challenge you to a duel, motherfucker. No, I, I got it. I got it when you slapped me. <laughs> I, I accept your challenge to a duel. In fact, if I were a pen and I'd point to out, the death. I would, I, okay, also to the death, implied, <laughs> implied in the duel agreement was to the death. You must accept okay. or, you, or you are a coward, <laughs> sir. Okay, I don't know the procedure here, but yes, I'm in. <laughs> I consent to a duel <laughs> to the death as agreed. Right now. Right now in this time and space. Can one of you guys fucking get this dude? <laughs> and one of the Earth Elementals, Elemental 3, is going to come and try and grab you, Bridget, mm. and drag you away from him. So do a strength contest with me. Strength, strength. I'm going to roll first because I want you okay. to see it. 19 plus 5, 24 is the number to beat. Brant Boulderstash. Okie dokie. I did not beat that. Fuck, I'm being thrown out of the club. <laughs> That's a 14. All right. So you are now grappled by this earth elemental and it starts to like slowly consume you. You sink into the dirt. And Gary looks down at you and says, I hope you don't mind if my friends join in. That's considerably very dishonorable of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a giant pile of dirt, man. I like you when you're older. <laughs> I don't understand the meaning of that. <laughs> All right, Dave, you're up. I would like to summon the three-headed demon dog Cerberus, please. Cerebus. <laughs> Cerberus. Cerebus. However you prefer to have that pronounced. Yes, Cerberus, because that's how it's spelled. Comes leaping out of your, again, and like, keep in mind, Carl is a pug. He is two feet. He's this chubby little sphere of a beach ball. This is Cerebus or Cerebus. We're going to just have to figure Cerberus? out what that is. Sea Dog, Cerberus is how some people sea pronounce dog it. Sea Dog is perfect, actually. Yeah, Sea Dog. Sea Dog is huge, right? He Dog is the size of a horse with three giant gnashing heads. And he, he doesn't come out but of... But they're still pugs, right? No, remember, he's a normal dog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got three normal dog heads. You were disappointed when you learned that last time. He really should have been three pugs in this universe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was hoping you would change your answer. And I'm going to keep asking until you do. Sorry, just Eli, ethnically speaking, what's a normal dog? What? What do you mean by that? Mm. Oh, and it... Madge is on the line right uh, now. Oh, my God. You know. Oh, God. Madge just logged into chat. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if he appears through his own portal and stands at your side and says, Yes, master. Tell me your bidding. Who the fuck is that? Uh, again? I Wow. This one's... Uh, <laughs> Really much more polite to me most of the time. I am Cerebus, the three-headed hellhound. Cerberus. Sea dog. Sea dog, whatever you prefer to pronounce it. 
a lot of controversy around that, but I'm here and I'm here to serve my masters every whim in action. Great. Uh, could you attack the big uh, mud guy real quick? The in the center one? The the big uh, Gary? Gary, can you just hold up your hand for a second? Hey, how's it going? That's yeah, that guy. Will you attack that guy? <laughs> nice. I noticed that the other one challenged him to a duel. Would it be appropriate for me to do that first? To wait, to what? Challenge him to a duel? You want to challenge him to a Yeah, sure. Challenge him to a duel, but like, do you fight him no matter what he says? You got it. All right. Hey, big guy. Yeah, what's up? I challenge you to a duel. Ooh, I'm fight actually him anyway. right fight him anyway in while the middle talking. of a duel right now. Oh, no, that's cool. I actually have specific instructions to fight you anyways. Great. But I will not consider it a duel. Okay, cool. Just like a recreational... Side fight, side fight. That is exactly what I was going to say. Side fight, yeah, totally. It's awesome. <laughs> All right, so he leaps over the earth elementals and they like desperately claw and swing at him, but he is just too powerful and goes just barreling into Gary's chest like and flame bursts from like his neck area. You have no idea where the flames are coming from. Maybe he breathes fire or what the fuck it is. Yeah, I would like him to do the fire breath specifically. Yeah, but he like breathes fire and just carves a giant chunk out of Gary who like sort of wobbles with the force of being hit by this giant horse sized three headed dog. Really quickly, did you say that the earth elementals grapple as he flies over? No, they tried to. They scrabbled at him. Does that mean that one of them disengaged from Anna and she gets an attack of opportunity? No, the two try to scrabble at her. The third one nice that has save. Anna is still uh -huh. yeah, got yeah, her. Sure. Yeah, um, also the duel's over because a friendly creature hurt Gary. Hurt. Yeah. Hey, buddy, I got good news. First of all, great attack. Thank you, friend. Yeah, so I, apparently my duel is over. So... I don't know if the offer's still on the table. <laughs> Master, should I duel him now? Apparently just have he's it still be a side fight. Do the side fire fight. breath. Side fight. We're sticking with side fight. Stick with side with fight. Side fire fight. breath, please. You got it. Have you written that down, Sheldon? And then like a tiny spot of mud on the wall is like, side fights one, duels <laughs> one. Got it. <laughs> oh, Sheldon. He's an intern. <laughs> a, oh, come on. A dirt pun. Dirt pun. Dirt pun on intern. Here we go. Here we go, Eli. You could do this. <laughs> He's, uh -huh. The word inter is right there. Inter, Eli. yeah. Igneous ter? No, inter. <laughs> inter. Like to bury. To put in He's dirt. an inter. An inter-rain. He's, Eli, no. No, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. It's hey, fine. Eli. Yeah. Flinter. Flinter. Oh, oh okay. God damn it. I hate it. Okay. I, it's like you guys can see in colors I can't see. God. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the Flint turn, he writes that down. All right. The other two elementals, they look up at Gary, sort of like, should we attack Carl or should we attack them? And they're, they're going to go after Carl. So they're going to try and grab him. Carl? You mean Cerberus? Sea Dog, sorry. Yeah, they're going to try and grab Sea Dog. That is not Carl the Pugapagicorn. And Doesn't each of the three heads breathe fire separately? Yes. Are they each a different different breed of dog? Oh, that would be awesome. No. Yes. Three the the three normal dogs. Yes, they are. And one of them is Pug. Nope. A pug? None of them are pugs. I hey, <laughs> I have set up a thing. None of them are pugs. I have a thing. It's like I don't know you anymore. I have set up a thing. God. They both <laughs> fail to grab you. <laughs> theme of our podcasting empire here. <laughs> it's like, I don't know you anymore, God. But yeah, they both try to grab it. Sea Dog and they fail. So Snedrick, you were up. Wait, what happened with the, he, he they didn't breathe fire and then he had to do a saving throw and he took a bunch of fire. What happened there? What? Yeah, he took fire damage. He took a chunk out of him. Yeah. You're talking about what did, what did Sea Dog do three turns ago? Yeah, I'm, did, I did not remember hearing, like, the fire damage happen because they had to do... Oh, it happened. There was a saving throw, and there would have to be, like, a whole bunch... What, what was the amount of damage? Yeah, he just didn't give us any numbers. Oh, I didn't give you any numbers because I was rolling for him. It was... Ooh. 42 points of damage. Yeah, there you go. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Get my act together. All right. Ah. Heath, uh, I'm going to say something from my heart right now. Is that, does that matter? Are you going to do anything with those numbers? Or? <laughs> well, also, I would like to maybe do a bonus action. Oh, you mm. had a bonus action besides summoning Carl. That was three turns ago. 
No, it wasn't. I was waiting to hear the 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 result of the one thing, and then I was going to do the next thing. Okay, let's rewind time. Who's who are the three turns that happened? Yeah, since I, th- I, w- I thought. I thought it was I'm just, with yeah, yeah, I'm with Heath on this one. Carl went and then Carl's not um, here. the golems went. Oh, sorry, Sea Dog went sea and Dog then the, went, the and golems then went. Both Earth elementals tried to grab him. Yeah, that started to happen. And I was like, I thought this was like something that was gonna happen first for some oh, reason. Oh, I see. No. So Carl attacked Gary. Carl's not here. Sea Dog <laughs> attacked Gary and did and hit for 42 damage with fire breath. 42 damage of fire breath, yes. Okay. And uh, and your bonus action? As a bonus action, I would like to use uh, some sorcery points to uh, be able to cast any spell I want. Nice. And I'm thinking that would be a delayed blast fireball level seven. All right. Talk about that delayed blast. A beam of yellow light flashes from my pointing finger, then condenses to linger at a chosen point within range as a glowing bead for the duration when the spell ends, either because my concentration is broken or because I decide to end it, the bead blossoms with a low roar into an explosion of flame that spreads around corners. Each creature in a 20-foot radius sphere centered on that point has to make a dexterity saving throw. Creature takes fire damage equal to the total accumulated damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. Fantastic. Finger nuke, right? Fuck yeah. The spell's base damage is 12d6. So are you ending it right away? Like you're just firing it and then instantly blowing it up? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it now. Oh, actually, I have, I do have just regular fireball. At I was going to say, you might not want to do. Yeah, um, I just have regular fireball. Um, so I'm not going to do the delayed one. I'm going to do the regular fireball. And you're not going to use your two mage points or whatever they are. No, he has to do that to get the bonus. Oh, you do have to do that. Okay. Actually, I will throw this out there as a reminder. You actually have a necklace of fireballs on. I know. So you could just throw one of the fireballs on your necklace instead as a bonus action. Yeah. So let's do that so I don't spend the sorcery points and I just throw a fireball level, uh, whatever the level is from the necklace. That'd be third level, I believe. Uh, If I remember correctly, it tells me, right? Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Third. 5C. Inventory. Yeah. So yeah, it shoots a third level fireball. 8d6 would be the damage. I think it's actually 12d6. Okay, yep, it, it, yep, it's 12d6. <laughs> I think it is 12d6. Now, are you trying to catch Gary and the two elementals? Are they all pretty close? They're all pretty close, right? Yeah, because they're right in front of him. Yeah, so I'm trying to catch all, I'm trying to catch all of them in this if I can. Now, when you say all of them, also the one that is holding on to Bridget? Yeah, I can uh, prevent Bridget from Do taking it. damage because I have a special extra thing that Don That's told me true. about. That's true. You have sculpting, Whoa. you have spell sculpting. Read the read that uh, description. Sculpt spells. When I cast an evocation spell, which this is, that affects other creatures that I can see, I can see Bridget. I can choose a number of them equal to one plus the spell's level. I'll just pick Bridget and I want to hurt the other ones. The chosen creatures will automatically succeed on their saving throws against the spell. Take no damage if they would normally take any damage. Nice. So Bridget's safe from it and I'm trying to get all the rest of them with it. Exactly. All right, Gary's going to try and dodge you first. I'm going to roll this publicly. More fun that way. That's a 19. Gary like balloons out a la Jim (laughs) Carrey in the mask around around the fireball just at the edges and takes no damage from the fireball. Let me roll for these earth elementals. That is... A 10, a 15, and an 8. So one of them escapes it, but the rest will take the damage. So roll that damage for me. So 12d6. 12d6, please. All right. The one holding Bridget is like, well, I mean, he's not going to get me. Ah! And he's just right in the middle of the fire. He assumed he would be safe because he was holding Bridget. And then Bridget just has dirt hands on her shoulders. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, I have the thing on speed roll, but literally the dice, like, one's held up by another. <laughs> it was taking forever. <laughs> 39 damage. Excellent. Yeah, you blow, like, one of this creature's big chunk out of this creature as well. And Snedrick, you are up. I have been waiting 45 minutes for this now. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I am going to summon a goddamn dragon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to use a sixth level spell slot to summon. A, oh, sorry. What kind of damage do earth elementals do? Um, they do Is it force damage, uh, bludgeoning damage. I believe I will double check just to make sure. So tell you incorrectly. Yeah. Bludgeoning. It's going to be a really cramped cave. I love it. Shit. That's like, that's like our style though. Yeah. Yeah, right. Very much a five five by five rooms are our specialty. (laughs) Are they just like punching with their mud or do they have like mud (laughs) weapons or do they have regular weapons or what? Right now they haven't punched yet. So you'll have to see what they do. Okay. Oh, they haven't had a turn yet, have they? They're going to bludgeon muddily somehow. What would you think would be cooler? Like the mud weapons? Probably weapons. (laughs) Mud weapons. Probably the mud weapons. Yeah. Yeah, right. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they do. What All right, well, weapons? shit, Just if it's curious. bludgeoning damage, then I don't think I want to summon this dragon because the main thing is uh, resistance. <laughs> I'm and- picturing a dragon just sadly walking back into the locker room. <laughs> right, right. No, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to summon an elemental my own, damn it. I am going to conjure elemental at level five. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I don't really under I don't really know what he does, but he's gonna he's I'm gonna tell him to go kick the elemental's ass that's fucking with Bridget. Nice. What kind of elemental is he? He's a earth elemental because or wait wait, is there like one or elemental that's like better against like do they? No, it's not Pokemon rules. That would be they cool don't Pokemon? though. Pokemon. Yeah, like, yeah. I was gonna say because a water elemental you would think would kick earth. Well, all right. So I'm gonna just summon an earth ent- elemental then. Nice. All right. So then the, the mud rises up next to Snedrick, and then there's a fourth earth elemental and just sort of looks around and shrugs at the other earth elementals. <laughs> and it's going to go running at. You're making it kill its own kind. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> it's got to do like psychological damage as well or something. I'm calling this one traitor earth elemental in my notes. It's a different color of dirt. Yeah. Racist. Whoa. It's got a little dirt mustache on it. I was going to say, let's <laughs> let's not make the I, Earth okay. Elementals different you know colors what? here. I take it back, Morgan, <laughs> if you could cut that part out. I'll put it in. Bridget's over here measuring the skulls of the Earth Elementals. <laughs> okay. Well. Okay. Think of it as shirts for skins. That's better. Yeah. I Cool. Never, <laughs> never bantering ever again. <laughs> He is going to make two slam attacks. That's eight plus five, 13 damage. One's over and punches that elemental that's holding on to Bridget. All right. That is him. Claw, you are up. Okay. I am going to fly a little bit closer I'm assuming Gary has like a back of the head, right? Like there's a there's a back to him. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, going to fly behind him and I'm going to shoot again with the bow. Mm-hmm. And if I can hit, I can do a great attack after that, but I got to hit first. Yeah. Then I'm going to fire another one of those. Swing. Okay, 17. That will not hit. Cool, I'm done, I guess. <laughs> I love that I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to build Morgan exactly the character he's been wanting to play. We get him all these <laughs> things. Now he's just uh, pink. <laughs> pink. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. There should have just been a giant chest for you to break open at the bottom of this thing. I, I fucked up. All right. Oh, I'll do a, I'll spend one of my lucky points to try and change you can that roll. Yeah. Yeah. So you have three luck points per rest. Whenever you make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, you can spend one luck point to roll an additional d20, and you choose which die to use. Mm-hmm. So I'll, I'll spend one of those, and I'll try again. Nice. Not going to work. It's going to be a fucking four. Hey, 17 plus 11, 20. There it is. You hit. Okay. Blam. So I'm going to roll. It'll be nine damage, and then I'm going to do the special sneak attack. Mm-hmm. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 10d6 damage to one creature you've already hit with an attack with a finesse or ranged weapon if you have advantage on the attack roll. You don't need advantage on the attack roll. If another enemy of the target is within five feet of it, that enemy isn't incapacitated, and you don't have disadvantage on the attack roll. Is Bridget within five feet of him? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. No, but you have to be. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, yes? Yeah. Okay, so 10d6, right? Yep, roll them. Okay. 36 damage. 36 <laughs> extra damage. All right. There we go. So you fire this arrow into Gary, but for some reason it like you hear it like sink deep into the earth that makes him he's like, oh that itches, it itches, oh it itches. <laughs> you know when you can just get that like tiny pin feeling in your back? And it's like in the inside of Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's uh-huh. that's exactly what happens. Isn't that like a brain tumor or no? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It's not a tumor. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Gary is going to stomp. So he's going to stomp, creating an earth tremor that extends in a 30-foot radius. That's going to get everybody except for Claw. Other creatures standing on the ground in that radius must succeed on a 23 dexterity saving throw, or you will fall prone. Okay. <laughs> I, did, I did not succeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither did I. <laughs> I was already prone, though, so you know. I have advantage on this, though, I think. Do you? Because of my robe of whatever the fuck? Sure. My robe of the <laughs> Archmagi? Does it give you advantage on dexterity saving throws? I believe it does. All right. Then roll again. Uh, let me just make sure I didn't make that up, but I'm pretty sure it does. I have advantage <laughs> on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. I, If you're not wearing a dexterity... If you aren't wearing... I am wearing it. It's not a magic. So does it matter if I'm prone or should I like use a thing to get out of this? I mean, you're, you're down on the ground. And attacks against you will have advantage. And you'll have to use your movement action to stand up. That's fine. Okay. I'm uh, prone. Nice. So the, everybody fell down, right? Oh, I was already down. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just checking that everybody fell down. You can cast down. spells from prone, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I thought somebody cast or somebody rolled a 22 there. I did, but I was already fine. Oh, you were, so just, it, didn't, it didn't matter. <laughs> I okay. just rolled for fun because I have high dexterity. And the DC was 23, so he and, would yeah, fall yeah. and throw oh, it right, right, yeah. yeah. So, he, he so just, you just you wasted know. a really good roll. Is what yep. Wasted yeah. a really yeah. good roll, exactly. Right. Not a great roll. It was only an 11. I just have a really high saving. Oh, wow, yeah. Adder. All right, Bridget, you're up. All right. Okay. I can. Whew. So I'm not in a duel with What's-His-Face anymore because the hellhound got him. The Dog not to be named. Cerberus. Sea dog. <laughs> All right. I am going to... And it, it doesn't cost any disadvantage to cast a spell on someone from prone, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the only difference is that if it's a touch spell, you would take minus four on the roll. But other than that, you're fine. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Is Gary a humanoid? No. Are the elementals? They're not human-shaped mud at all? None of them? No. I feel like Gary was humanish. No, they're technically elementals. Oh, Gary's an elemental too? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to try this just for shits and giggles. I'm going to summon a guardian of faith. Ooh. Ooh. Do we have room for another character? Because we've already got <laughs> oh, three I'm, elementals. I'm leaning in. I decided to lean into this instead of fight it. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I got other shit. I have a dragon yet I could bring out. <laughs> I, so. I know. You could bring that dragon in. It looked very disappointed when you. What, what, what are the teams right now on the fight? We've got ele- four people against us. And we. It's- yeah. So it's, so it's, it's uh, Gary and three elementals. And then us, Cerberus, yeah. and my elemental. And now a what? And now a large spectral guardian appears and hovers for a, the duration, which is eight hours, by the way, <laughs> in an unoccupied space of your choice that you can... Well, is there an unoccupied space at this point? Yeah, right. No, yeah. there, <laughs> there are no, Yeah, there are some. <laughs> okay, um, that you can see within range. The guardian occupies that space and is indistinct except for the gleam for a gleaming sword and shield emblazoned with the symbol of in this case who brand polar stash uh, no the symbol of your deity valkyr valkyr okay cool any creature hostile to you that moves to a space within 10 feet of the guardian and i'm good for the first time on a turn must succeed on a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 20 radiant damage on a failed save or half as much damage on a successful one. The guardian vanishes when it has dealt a total of 60 damage. Okay. So 
little flavor here. I'm going to say that your guardian of the faith actually appears as Valkyr because <gasps> of how powerful you are. Oh, lovely. So there's a there's a crack of thunder and Valkyr, or at least one of his, you know, emissaries appears. Right in the middle of the fucking golems. All right. Right in the middle of the golems. Aye. Nice, which means they all need to make dexterity saving throws. Dexterity saving throws. All righty. It's a DC 18. Nice. So that would be a 16, a 10, and a 12. That's all failures, right? Oh, yeah. 20 damage each. 20 radiant damage. Yeah, so he has like this lightning sword. It's a sword shaped like a bolt of lightning, which is very impractical, but also very Valkyr. And slash, slash, slash. Roll that damage for me. No, that's just ra 20 radiant damage. Oh, just 20 damage. 20 damage. Okay, 20 damage. And then he disappears because that is 60 damage. Felt. There you go. And 20 damage. Oh, yeah. That sucks. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Well, you know. you know, Good, though. I, I, They're probably uh, almost dead. Hopefully. I don't know. This is a fucking boss battle. All right, Bridget. The earth elemental that grabbed you earlier that has taken the most damage. Mm. It is coming for you. Nobody's taken any damage, right? None of us. In have, this fight, no. uh, none of us. Okay, cool, 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 cool. It's gonna hit you with two slam attacks. Slam. It has sla slam. Ex exactly slam. It has uh, advantage on both of those and attacks. And welcome to the jam. <laughs> Delightful. Well, t let me know what they are. Twenty-one and a twenty-one. Nope, neither. Neither of them hit. No. All right. So, yeah, it slams on either side of you. And then it misses you and it looks sort of disappointed. <laughs> I'm going to floss at them. Yeah. From the ground, which is really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> do you use your move action to stand up, by the way? Oh, absolutely. I can do that. I, All right. Yeah. I'm going to do it's that. It's pretty funny if you floss from prone, though. Yeah. I'm, oh, I'm I'm gonna, gonna... I am gonna actually going to floss as I'm getting up, which is even yeah. more... <laughs> yeah, I make a dexterity, make a dexterity oh, check oh, 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 to floss uh, while you oh, stand up. Oh, uh, are you sure that's not athletics? No, nope, it's dexterity <laughs> to floss if while you, you stand this, up. It's even funnier though because you're going to be getting up badly and flossing. Fifteen, motherfucker. Nope, you get your arm caught on your armor of <laughs> warriorness and you floss yourself back down to the ground. <laughs> Damn it, really? I don't make the rules. I'm so sorry. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. You absolutely do make the rules. <laughs> you absolutely make the rules. You made what that the hell rule. got me up? <laughs> You're up. You, you know what? I'm You're up. up, but you look embarrassed. You but look super I look embarrassed. really stupid. I wouldn't post that on TikTok. Exactly. Okay. You see the the flint turn in the corner posting it to TikTok. <laughs> oh, Although it's fantasy, damn fantasy social media. It's for elemental, so it's tick rock. <laughs> You can see all the colors if you try. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, just hopping in to thank you once again for listening to the show. And hey, Happy New Year! Unless, of course, you're listening to this back in the day or as an episode chunk. Well, if it's an episode chunk, I think you don't hear this part. But anyway, if you're listening back, believe me when I say that this was a part of the January of 2023 episode. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for your support since we started this show. As you can tell, we are sort of reaching the conclusion of this season, but we have no intention of stopping the show. We're just having an amazing time doing it, and we can't wait to keep doing it for all of you. I especially want to thank all of you who reached out this month and last month to ask how we can get two episodes a month. That is a Patreon goal over at patreon.com forward slash DMD minus. So once we get a certain amount of patrons over there, we will be doing two episodes a month. So I know especially last couple of months where it was a little bit shorter on the episode side, you want more DMD minus. We want to make more DMD minus for you. But because we got Morgan doing this incredible edit and helping us out so much, we want to make sure that we can reimburse him right and pay everybody right to do the job that we need them to do. All right. So yeah, if that's something you'd like to have happen and you haven't given us any money yet, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out. Give us as little as a dollar. You can have two episodes a month, plus all the behind the scenes stuff, the bonus episodes, all sorts of cool stuff. And we got even more of that coming in the new year. All right. I think that's it. 
Thank you so much for listening to the show. Let's get back to it. All right, Dave, you are up. All right. I will be casting Finger of Death, seventh level. Ooh. Seventh level. Read that spell description for us. I send negative energy coursing through a creature that I can see within range. That'll be Gary, causing it searing pain. Searing. The target must make a constitution saving throw. It takes 78 plus 30 necrotic damage on a failed save or half as much successful. Okay. And he's not a humanoid is what you said before? Yes. So if he gets killed by this, he would rise and start the next turn as a zombie that we control and command. But I guess that doesn't count. <laughs> okay, so this is a constitution saving throw? Yeah, he's got to get a 21, I think. All right, I'm going to roll this publicly. There's plus nine to this roll. That's a one. That's a Yay! critical, That's a critical yeah. failure. All right, paint a picture for me here, Dave. What do you, what do, you do? What does Finger of Death look like? Well, according to the uh, letter from the owl I got, the point of this product is to take dominance on the battlefield by turning my enemies into mush. So he like Ooh. double extra plus ungood because critical turns into mush and takes a whole bunch of like huge damage. Searing, searing pain. I would like you to just reenact the noise of what that pain would be for oh, Gary. I'm going to. I'm going to. But I want to know how you send negative energy with my uh, finger. Just by like <laughs> me, 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 kind of but me, 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 like me, pew, pew, like finger Something. guns. Yeah. Oh, finger guns. Does it take a form? Is it a color? Do you say anything particularly hurtful? I give him the finger. I do double birds. Double I, birds. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Double birds. Tweet, so tweet. He's really getting fingers of death because it's critical. That's racist. He's giving a good fingering of death. <laughs> yep. Dave throws up the double birds and you see these green outlines sort of emanate from him. And they enter Gary, and at first there's sort of nothing going on, but then you see the earth itself he, he's made of sort of dry out, right? Like, you've never seen dirt be dead before, but it sort of turns chalky and white and lifeless and sort of cracks and falls away, and bigger and bigger chunks of him fall away until there's just two giant double bird, like, holes <laughs> missing in Gary, and he goes, oh, wow! I would describe that as searing pain. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that damage for me. That's a 55. Yeah. Ooh, Jesus. 55 points of damage. But it's doubled because critical, right? No, he, he had a critical failure. So he just really, really got affected by that spell. It's a, a crit success is what does double dice damage. But again, that's different because it's a saving throw. So no, I'd like to roll for critical success. Sure. Roll a d20. Okay. If it's a 20, you get critical success. I'll double the dice. Love it. Fuck! 19! God no. damn Oh, my God! Oh. Come on! Oh, that was directly from Jesus. That was directly from Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> Make fun of me for Carl. a living. Yep. That was from Carl for not being used. Carl nudged that dice over one die. <laughs> I'd like to use a sorcery point to make that a 20. <laughs> no. No. DM rolls. DM challenges to the gods. Don't, don't get any pluses or minuses. I, 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 I can roll something again. I, I get to three times a day, re-roll that, a d20. That's in the game. You're outside of the game. You're outside of the game here in the meat space. No, this is real. This is from Don, Ford, and Alex. <laughs> I am feeling lucky. Three times a day, I can re-roll a d20 on an ability, attack, or save. Do it. And take the new roll if I want. Do it. This is going to be so great. If this if is it's a 20, 20 you get oh it. God. I'm selling you, you get it's it. It's not. You do God 20. damn it. Okay. No, nope, that's a four. <laughs> I choose not to take it. It doesn't matter, but I choose That's not fine. to. You choose not to. That's fair. All right. And then what do you want Sea Dog to do? Master, your command. Uh, yeah, just before that, I would like to bonus action it up. Yep. All right. I'll be waiting here. Sorry. Yeah, no, you just, <laughs> you just uh, keep uh, taunt him for a little bit. Say, challenge him to another duel, actually, while I'm doing this, if you don't mind. Already been turned down for a duel once. No means no, Master. Yeah, I know. You're doing a side fight, but like, see if the duel maybe is on the docket. Dual consent is very important, Master. Yeah, ch just check it out, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a fireball thing. All right, you do a fireball thing. All right, I'm gonna do the th the thing where I throw the the necklace pieces again. How many necklace pieces do you have? I have nine. 
Shit. All right. Now, now I have eight. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, and I can use multiple ones if I want to, and increase the level. Ooh. So I'm going to do that. And let's see, necklace of fireballs. Yeah, I used one. Of, I have nine charges. Now I have eight. I'm going to use three this time. Ooh. And when I do so, increase the level of the fireball by one for each bead beyond the first. Love Ooh. it. So this would be a level six fireball now, I think, or a level five, right? Mm-hmm. Who are you throwing those at? And uh, I'm throwing them where Gary and the elementals all get hit. Cool. That's going to be a 15 saving throw. That's a seven, a five, and an 18. So two of them get hit. Ooh. Gary Bear. 15, he saves. So he is going to take half damage, and one of the elementals is going to take half damage. The rest are going to take full damage. So roll that damage for me. All right, what was that? 12d6? 12d6. Blam. Yes. 49er. 49. All right. So the elemental that went for Bridget just blasted to dust. Gone. Fuck yeah. No longer part of the equation. Oh, yeah. I saved Bridget with that thing from that I can save her. Yeah. Thank you. I assume so. And Claw. Claw, are you right there? No, he's no, I'm hovering f- above I'm him. flying behind him. Okay. But I can save like six people if I want. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> don't, don't patronize me. <laughs> Go close so I can save you. Whatever. I'm a bird. I need no saving. All right. And you, then you and uh, you double birds. So yeah, there's just a burst <laughs> of flame. Gary tries to expand out again, but just the flame licks at him. So he still stakes uh, some of that damage. Uh, the one elemental who saves takes none, but the other two take the full blast. And Gary takes what? Half? 24? Yeah, it takes half. Yeah. Okay. And then Sea Dog is up. Now, Master, is it time? Are you yeah. done with did, your bonus? Did, did he say yes to the duel while I was doing I the fireball? I thing? was waiting to let you do your bonus. All right, well, check, check, check the duel. Do you feel like a duel? Does it matter even? What is the difference? You told Between me. Between a side fight and a duel. You tell me to duel, I duel. Because you are my master. <laughs> Ask the. Hey, uh, intern? Intern? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a difference in some technical way between a side fight and a duel? Oh, big difference. Dramatically speaking? Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, 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 Huge deal. What would, that, what, would you, what would you prefer? What would I prefer? Yeah. I would prefer to be paid for my work. Internships sure. are <laughs> really terrible creations of capitalism. They do not. Do you have a lot of college debt? I have a lot. A yeah. lot of college debt. I went to the University of Boulder. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to clear it up though, Dave, I challenged him to a duel because it was a specific spell that would have advantages and disadvantages if I if he was fighting me. So literally none of this matters is what I'm talking about. None of it right matters. Now. It was literally broken the, the minute you you attacked him. This so. is completely irrelevant, everything I've been saying this it's whole time. It's entirely irrelevant at this point. Are you guys all listening to this? Uh, just attack regular do the uh sea dog. Yep. Do the, the fire breathing thing again um, with all three of your heads, like as much as you can. I did all three last time. I yeah, have do, to wait. So do that again. Four to six turns. <laughs> wow. Yup. Thematically, not great, but I'm going to do one fire ray, which apparently doesn't need to recharge. Which head are you going to use? And what's the breed of that head? The center one. The one that's talking right now. Is it a bulldog? Nope. Oh. Do your other faces have different accents? Yes. Hey, w- would you like to talk to one of the other ones? Yeah, can I talk to one of the other ones real quick? Prove it. <laughs> All right. Second one, left side. Why, hello. It's, hello. It's me, the other head of Sea Dog. Nice. I've yeah. always depended on the kindness of rangers. Wow. So, oh, is this street car named Desire? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> technically, this is pre medieval, so I invented this. <laughs> <laughs> street Streetcar named Defire. Oh, that's a good one. See? Yeah. Okay. Well, can you not also do the fire breath? No, nope, we're all th- the three of us did it last time together, and now right now I could just do. He can do one for some reason. Will you ask the third one? Yeah, ask the right guy. I ask the third one. Yeah. Hey. Hey, you have the same voice as the other guy. No, I'm. T- I am kidding. <laughs> Are you a Brussels Griffin? I'm kidding, motherfucker. You have wrecked this setup <laughs> and this knockdown. <laughs> I'm going to hide your pain medication. <laughs> and place it with peanut fucking m ms Killed this joke. I'm so- just going to say you might need to hide her pain medication. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Hey, 
third third head. Yeah. Who I have a voice for. Uh, who I have a voice for. Oh, there it is. You're di- you are different. Nope. I'm calling him. Give me a second. <laughs> Here he comes. He's asleep. Ring. And uh, oh, it's me. Ho, ho, ho. Hello. Santa? <laughs> the third one is Santa Claus. <laughs> it is. Nope. It's. I just. You're not Santa Claus. I'm voice? just a jolly dog head. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> okay. What do you need? It's a polar bear. Just all, all three of you breathe fire again, if you wouldn't mind. At the, again, uh, we need to recharge that for four <laughs> to six fucking turns. I don't know what that means. Earlier, you said there was no recharge, if I remember correctly. No, there's re- recharge on one head. No recharge on one head. Recharge on all three heads. So do do the fire breath at the uh, big... Gary, raise your hand one more time. Uh, hey! Yep. That guy. Wait a second. No, that's me. Sorry, I was doing the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, I heard, I heard hey! you were doing a voice of Carl, right? Yep. Because you met him. I got... There's a lot of voices going yeah, around right now. It's hard now. to keep track of. Yep. Uh, we're going to fireball you now. Or breath you? Oh, absolutely. You technically, cool. you just did. Just stand still. <laughs> All right. You got it. <laughs> I miss Carl. Ranged spell attack. Ooh, All right, can so- I summon Carl also? No. You can't have two familiars? Carl doesn't exist yet. Oh, right. We're back in time. Yeah. Forgot. I thought Carl always was and always was. I thought be. he was eternal. Yeah. I agree. No. Queen of time is, or queen of chaos is, but... Carl is a temporal demon. He is not infinite in the same way. Stupid withdrawn. Sorry. Stupid, yeah. Time obviously. doesn't work different in hell. All right. This is plus 11. No, that will not do it. All right. So he breathes fire. Santa head breathes fire, but it just passes over Gary. Doesn't do anything. Santa, that was a shitty fireball. Just so oh, you know. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. you've made me so sad. I'm rooting against us now. Oh, dear. Yeah. I have some problematic thoughts about Jews. <laughs> okay. Well, All right. I'm glad that happened. The flint turn is right yeah. there. Jesus, oh, dude. wow. I, you know, I'd hate, I wish I could say I was surprised. <laughs> this is a hostile work of, wait for it. I'm going to get it. This is a crystal work environment. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come to me. Because crystals are Hots, underground. Hoss. Something. All right. The two earth <laughs> elementals are going to attack. I assume you've all stood up at this point, right? Yeah. Has anybody taken any damage yet? Nope. No. No. Okay. Nope. So I have not stood up yet because I haven't had a turn since we got knocked down. Oh, oh sure, okay. sure, 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 sure. So I, just, I, I don't want to you know, volunteer to get hit, but I don't want to be dishonest. You know? okay. I have integrity. All right, yeah. So they're they're going to come for Dave because he's doing a lot of damage. That is a twenty-two and a ten. Do those hit? The ten misses. The twenty-two hits. All right, twenty-two hits. They are going to do two d eight plus five. Going to be fifteen damage. And how much? How much do you have overall, Dave? Uh, I just took fifteen. I'm down to eighty-seven. Okay, so I'm I'm I've got a reaction. If any of my uh, buddies are hit within five feet of me, and I assume that you're you're within We're right five next feet, to each yeah? Other, yeah, we're mm-hmm. right next to each other. Exactly. I can take that damage instead of you. Do you have a bunch of hit points? I have a bunch of hit points. I'm like a a tank. Okay, here's the yeah. thing. Mm. I I get a reaction. Oh, you also have a reaction. I will. Oh, you know what? I'll I'll leave it then. Let's see. If I take damage, yeah. If you take it, I don't get my reaction. Okay, okay, cool. Cool, cool. Never mind. And because I feel like it's pretty minor. So I take it. And when I take damage from a creature within 10 feet of me, which I just did, I can use my reaction to force the creature to make a strength saving throw, DC 19. On a failure, the target takes 2d8 force damage and gets pushed up to 10 feet away from me. On a success, the target takes half as much and does not get pushed. And I can use this reaction six times between long rests. All right. How does a nine do? That does not save. All right. Roll that damage. 2d8 force damage, right? Nice. All right. Seven. Seven. Seven damage. Nice. So, and that one gets blasted 10 feet back from you as well. All right. Snedrick, you are up. Ooh, ooh. All right. I am going to cast Blight. Ooh. Let me use a fourth level spell slot. On Gary, that is necrotic energy that washes over him. 
He takes eight D8. Oh, he has to make a constitution saving throw. He needs to get a 22. And he takes eight D8 of necrotic damage or half as much on a successful save. He's not a construct, is he? No. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah, I can do that. All righty. That is a 20. Anyway, he needed a 22. Oh, all right. Roll that so damage. He is going to take nice 42 damage. Yeah. 42 Damn. damage. All right. Give me a little, give me a little language. How, what does this blight look like when you do it? So he still has the, the holes, I'm assuming, from the birds mm-hmm. in the middle of him are like, I don't know if there's like in the middle of healing or whatever. I feel like like some kind of a sticky rock, like what would it be? What would be like a sticky rock substance? Like a, like a, what would be, what would a rock vomit? Magma? I guess magma. Yeah. Well, no, because magma would hurt mud? people. Yeah. It is, it's going to have to be mud because otherwise it would hurt everybody around. So yeah, it's just going to, as it closes up, it's just going to vomit out a bunch of mud and, and shit. And he's just going to like, look like he really has to go to the bathroom, but can't because mm-hmm. he's in the middle <laughs> of a duel oh. or side fight rather. Oh boy. That's oh no. <laughs> I shouldn't have eaten that Taco Bell. <laughs> nice. So Gary's doing that like, uh, uh, mm. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh right. no, I hate that. <laughs> He's putting oh. one finger in front of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Snedrick, what does the traitor earth elemental do? Okay, so one of the elementals got... He's not a traitor. He is on the side of goodness and righteousness. The other ones are the fucking traitors. One of them got blasted back 10 feet, so he's going to attack the other one. All righty. With his earth elemental, like, earth weapon thing. Mm-hmm. He's got a big double-sided axe, like a big Love fucking it. Viking axe made of stone. That's going to be one hit and one miss. Saunter 2d8. Ooh, max damage, 16. Fuck yeah. It's because he's on the side of goodness and righteousness. Ha, huh, you were up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to do, similar to last time, just another, I'm going to stay behind him, and I'm going to fire the bow again and try and get a sneak attack. Get him? I pretty much have, like, one thing to do. Like, I'm a level 20 character, but I can, like, do, like, one thing. I also have one thing I get to do. Yeah. I, if we were outside, I could do so much shit, y'all. I can hell on these fucking storms and tsunamis and shit. Amazing. Oh, wait, before I do that, I am going to, I should have done this originally, but I'm trying to be smart and I was stupid instead. I'm going to make Gary my sworn enemy, Mm -hmm. which is going to raise the damage on the oath bow if I hit him. Sure. So if he dies, he stops being my sworn enemy or if it lasts a week or something like that. But Mm -hmm. so I'm going to try and hit him here. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Soup. Arrow goes sinking into him. Nothing. <laughs> oh, should I use another luck point? Hey, Matt, did you just make me your sword enemy back there? Because <laughs> can I just say I am currently dueling <laughs> at least two people and I cannot oh, take Oh, come another. on, you're side fighting one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> when everyone asks me later who my greatest enemy is, now I can say it's... You know what, Gary? If we God were dueling, damn it, then let you me be- pay off my punchline. Ah! I can say it's... <laughs> you know what? I'm going to use my kill I'm gonna kill myself <laughs> right on the air. I'm going to bud wire the shit out of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can say my greatest enemy is Twitter because you're a bird. Good. Go ahead. What were you going to say? <laughs> do it, coward. Gary, I'm going to save you from bud wiring yourself. I'm going to do stroke of luck once per short rest. If your attack misses a target within range, you can turn the miss into a hit. Got it. You want to just give him a second to see if he does the Bud Dwyer thing? <laughs> <laughs> Saves all some time. <laughs> so that miss is now a hit, right? Yep. Mud Dwyer. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, excellent. How do I change the 1d8 plus 5 into the... Oh, plus 3d6. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is the first part of the damage. 6 plus 3d6, which is another 13. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to do a sneak attack. Mm -hmm. And if it hits, I may use the invisibility ring, but if it doesn't, I guess it doesn't matter, does it? It always hits. Yeah. So to be clear, sneak attack is not a separate or different attack. It's just an extra thing you get to add on to an attack that succeeds. It's just an auto hit. It's 30 damage. 
And then I'm going to do one more sneak attack. All right. So you got to hit again is what you got to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Also, you have an advantage on these rolls. Oh. That's the point of a sneak attack. Cool. So do a advantage DC hit. Yeah. Seven plus 11 or? Nope. 19 plus 11. That'll do it. Yeah. So do, but don't do the original attack again. Just do the sneak attack damage, right? No, you can do both damages. Okay, cool. So plus another seven. Seven. And then another 3d6. Another 12. 12. And then another 38. Oh, 38. Holy all shit. right. So you've been noticing all these chunks taken off of Gary and Claw. As you fire your arrows expertly, you fire them at like the, the dirt that's holding the rest of Gary up. And half of Gary just sort of like slides over and thuds. And the eyes and face that usually make up the sort of anthropomorphic part of him vanish and appear on the smaller things. So now, instead of like a 20-foot hill, he's like a 10-foot hill. And I would say that you notice he looks slightly milder. Huh. Less spicy. Yeah, yeah. like in attitude? or In like attitude, in... in sensuality. His elan, <laughs> his zest has been <laughs> decreased. His joie de vie, you, if you will. Did you okay. just steal his mojo? <laughs> yeah. Mojo removed. Mojo. He goes, Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, flying when I can't fly, that's no fair. Let me find you a friend. And then he opens his mouth like nightmarishly wide and goes like, oh, pui. And he spits a big boulder into the air and like chips fly off the boulder. Like, tee -tee -tee. it's almost as though it's being carved in midair and a full size gargoyle springs into life flapping its stone wings in the air. And the gargoyle is going to attack right away. Is he doing that with magic right now? Uh, no. That is, again, his natural ability. It feels pretty magical. It's pretty magical. A flying gargoyle that he spits out of his mouth feels pretty fucking magical. <laughs> Not magical. This is science again. Yeah, I, I, I want to know if he's undead, but I, I know better than to ask. The gargoyle is not undead. No. Is anybody <laughs> undead in this room? Uh, No. Okay. I'm assuming he attacks me, right? Yeah. He's going to attack you twice. Wait, is the gargoyle a fiend? No. Oh, damn. Is the gargoyle a humanoid? No. What is the gargoyle? He is a medium elemental. Got it. He's, he's a manicurist, actually. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he has a name. Thank you. And it is? It's Reginald. <laughs> I love this. Okay, that's a nine and a 19. Uh, he gets plus four to both of those. So that's a 13 and a 24. 23. The 23 will hit. 23 will hit. Thank you. And he will do. That is seven damage. I am... Can I do a reaction to this attack? Depends. What kind of reaction is it? Uncanny dodge. Read that description for me. When an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to have the damage against you. Yeah. Make it three. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. Holy shit. That dodge was fucking <laughs> weird. <laughs> that was uncanny. So worth it. <laughs> what happens is you dodge and it hits like it the scratches a stalactite that's got like weird iron in it and the theme of friends plays like it's very <laughs> like da, 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 and no one knows like it's just a weird it's obviously just the echoes of him scratching that thing but everyone sort of pauses for a second and it's like you guys heard Do you guys remember that show i feel like it doesn't hold up well do you ever watch it recently you know, i think the gay panic stuff is not great. Yeah, not great but at other, all. But other than that, I'm a big fan. You're a big fan. <laughs> it's pretty problematic. You should really, I mean, maybe don't check it out. You're it's, problematic. Doesn't hold up. Have Have you ever seen Ross without the laugh track? <laughs> it's really cringy. Oh, is, hey, everybody. Yeah, I, Brad Balderstash has some YouTube clips for us from 1997 he'd like to share. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys seen Charlie bit my finger? That's you, Brad. That's what you said. Like. <laughs> Who you are. Well, it really hurt. All right. You're up. Is it my turn? Oh, good. Yeah, it is your turn. Oh, good. Okay. So you said that they don't take slashing damage very well, but they can, right? They can. Yes, they have resistance, not immunity. They can. Because I just realized that I've been wasting my time not using this Holy Avenger. Holy Avenger longsword. I assume it has all the Avengers on it, which is great. 
Yeah. Love that. It's like a lunchbox. Hi. <laughs> so uh, first, as a bonus action, I would like to challenge someone to a duel. Who wants Silent. to duel? Nice. Get Reginald. No, he's kind of weak, actually. Uh, Reginald is flying around, right? It's his, I, although it is a little cramped in here. You could fight the intern. <laughs> uh, no, the intern isn't paid, isn't doing any damage, doesn't have a... Yeah, Does he hasn't taken a, a turn? turn. Doesn't have a beef with anybody. <laughs> Seems like an easy win. He's been taking a turn each time, but mostly he just like goes on coffee runs and Aye, makes exactly. like passive aggressive TikToks about the work environment, but they don't take off. He so he's just like, who am I doing this for? Scones. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed nobody has helped themselves to the donuts and danishes I got. I listen, the second I'm done with this battle, I will do that. Why'd you get Danish? Now, in my defense, they are rocks. <laughs> rock cakes I am a rock All right I'm gonna attack the nearest gargoyle Or should I go for Gary? Go for Gary, you know, yeah I'm not gonna go for Gary Because you're, you're all all. Yeah, I'm gonna get the, the nearest uh... There's one close to you One ten feet back Oh, get that gargoyle I feel like that's gonna do some damage All right I'll get the one close Sure Whatever the closest one is I'm going to challenge you to a duel Slap, slap, all that and uh, I'm going to try to hit you with my sword. And you can see Gary is like weirdly jealous. He's like, oh, <laughs> I kind of thought that we had something uh, <laughs> like a special enemy. So to use the sword, you no, gain. No, no, go ahead a... and use your fucking sword against my element. All right. It's my turn. I have the talking stick. No, whatever you Gary. want. <laughs> I have the talking stick. So what was that, Gary? Nothing. <laughs> I gain a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this weapon. All right. And it, I don't think it did that math for me already because it still it says plus one. Oh, plus four. Plus 14. Oh, my God. Okay, never mind. So I get a plus plus three to attack with it. That's a 30. Yeah, that'll hit. All right. And flashing damage. That's 21 damage. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. And can I read the rest of this? So it's not a fiend or undead. We did that, so I'll skip it. While you hold the drawn sword, it creates an aura in the 10-foot radius around you. You and all creatures friendly to you in the aura have advantage on saving throws mm. against attacks or spells. Nice. And other magical effects. If you have... 17 or more levels as the paladin class, which I do, the radius of the aura increases to 30 feet. So you're welcome, everybody. Nice. Fuck yeah. And now I will have one of those those uh, donuts, if you don't mind. <laughs> Again, I can't emphasize enough. They are just Danish-shaped rocks. I just don't want okay. to disappoint anybody. Uh, well, you know what? You're doing a great job. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Do you know if this is going to turn into a paid position, Gary? Well, you know, the economy, kiddo, it's a real... <laughs> you know, we've seen the future and you're not in it, unfortunately. Sorry. Oh, wow. It's because you're Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's fun to make a joke and know that I have to edit me. You got to cut that. <laughs> yeah. But I'll hear it and I'll be like, good job, Eli. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> All right, Dave, you are up. All right, I'm going to cast Meteor Swarm. Level nine. Jeez. Wow. Blazing orbs of fire plummet to the ground at four different points that I can see within range. Each creature in a 40-foot radius sphere centered on each point that I choose must make a dexterity saving throw. 21 is the value for that. The sphere spreads around corners. I guess that doesn't matter. A creature takes 20 d6 fire damage and 20 d6 bludgeoning damage on a failed save. Oh! or half on a, a successful one. A creature in the area of more than one fiery burst is affected only once. Okay. Let's roll those dexterity saving throws. Okay. So this is going to be Gary's. This is hitting everybody, right? Because I get four points and each has a 40 foot. Yeah, I'm going after mm -hmm. everybody here, including the gargoyle, Gary, the, the elementals. The gargoyle, it won't hit because the gargoyle is in the air. We're in a cave. There's a 40 foot radius that hits him somewhere. He's way up in the air. That's why I didn't go over and try to jump up and hit him with my sword. Yeah, it's not a 40 foot sphere. It's a 40 foot no. radius. It's a 40 foot radius sphere. Is it a sphere? Yeah. Oh, okay. Then yeah, you, you would hit him as well. Okay, then I need to roll for him too. Okay, I'm going to roll for the earth elementals. 
14. Hit. 8. Hit. 12. All hit. All right, roll that damage. All right, that's 20d6 and then 20d6. Do them. Yes. 40d6. All right. Where's the, all right, here's the first one. That's a 75 for the first 20d6. That's damage each, right? Yeah, they each get 75. Mm-hmm. And then again, 72, 147. All right. So the elementals ground down to a powder, right? Just gone. Yeah. Gary, you see these meteors come crashing down, meteors crashing down, crashing down, crashing down, crashing down. When the dust and the flame finally clears, you see the Gary you know standing in front of you, five foot something tall, big friendly smile on his face. And he says, hey, um, you guys, I decided I don't, I don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> Should we let him get away with that? I feel like that's just a <laughs> shenanigans thing. No, wait, wait, wait. Turn into something else. Wait, wait, wait. Before you guys hit me again, because I'm going to be real. The last thing that fucking sucked. If you guys uh, leave me here, I'll make a bunch of cool shit for you. And then, uh, cause I, I've been, I've been around here for a while. Adventurers. I got, I got magic items. I got armor, all sorts of cool stuff. And I'll, I'll set up like a little store and I, I won't even charge you guys. So you can have stuff for free at my store from all the things I have. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'm listening if you promise to do it to the third generation. Okay, that's to be your, your kids and then your kids' kids. Uh, okay, deal. What do you think would happen to the timeline if we killed them? <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to go back and get all the infinity stones. It would be yeah, over, I, way you too know long. What? Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I think fucking... I like your idea, Gary. I do. Gary's assemble. <laughs> Remember that? When he was like, mm-hmm. assemble, sure. and everyone came out of the holes. Nope. <laughs> what? I really feel like that's the last time we were sort of united as a nation. And then COVID <laughs> happened, and I just... <laughs> sure. I feel like society broke. Sometimes I just watch that scene, like, late at night by myself. Why did you turn into a giant evil mud mountain a, a second ago? What was that? Uh, so, turns out I actually was a giant evil mud mountain, but then you beat the shit out of me, and now I'm yeah. nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's my story. You're not going to do that again? Unless I learn how to get big again. Absolutely not. Oh, God. I'm nice from now on. Can we do like a perception check on he's lying or not? Yeah, sure. No, we know the check. future. We know him later. Yeah, you know me later. We know the future. In between now and then, he could do it again. This is like wondering what's going to happen in the middle of Batman Begins. I mean, yeah. Do a perception check on whether you've listened to our podcast. <laughs> There's like 50 years of space that we don't know about. Look, if you beat someone up with a bunch of meteors, they're good for at least 50 years. Yes. That's that's locked in. That's locked in. All right. All right, then All right. I don't need to but check. But there's no telling what it's going to be after we come back from this. Yeah. You show up and Gary's like, "All right, who's ready to fucking rumble?" <laughs> <laughs> Just me or did he jump the gun on? I'm not sure if it was him or if I just did it badly. We'll never know. I thought I did it badly. Don't blame yourself. It could be both. Yeah. I don't blame me. I'm blaming on the ah, 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 <laughs> all those fucking codeines I'm taking. <laughs> <laughs> codeine's a hell of a drug. Yeah. It is. It really is. It is a hell of a I drug. I lost track between four and five. I'm not going to lie. There you go. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Well, we're down all competent players except for Noah. So <laughs> this should be an interesting one. 
<laughs> Noah, do you want to like go run head first into the outside wall of your I'll house? Sure I can do. I'll sure I can Even do. plane, you know, get everybody going. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved.